Hi, teacher. Good evening. Hi, good evening. ¿Cómo está? Hi there. Very well. And you? I am doing very well, too. Thank you. You're how, welcome. How was your long weekend? Uh, it's a little bit tired because okay. I went to the supermarket and I went to the market and bought um, many things. Uh, uh, we needed, neither, uh, neither, and then I decorate my house according to the Christmas tree and other decoration too. Oh, that's nice. You know, we were very close. Well, I was very close to buying a Christmas tree. And then I said, yeah. you, know, you know what, at Super Selectos, and I said to myself, you know what, I'm gonna wait <laughs> to, to get it, you know, cheaper. And yes. so that was, that was yesterday. And then today I go back to the supermarket to buy it and it's no, it's no longer there. It's, it's, it's very expensive now. So now, uh, I, now I feel in a, really bad. In a market of EPA, is, I have a, I have some offered according to the Christmas tree and others decorations. Oh, really? Yes. And, and how much, like, let's say if I wanted to get, like, maybe not too small, but medium size tree. Do you know yes, how much they um, are? I, I, I love a long tree, the tall. The, the yes, big tall? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, eight, how do you say pies? Eight feet. Eight feet. Eight feet, yeah. Or, yeah. Or you could in, say in in mirror is two point forty centimeters. Yeah. yeah, so it's oh okay. That would be metros, right? Two. Yes. Two oh, meters. Sorry, centimeters. Centimeters. So that, <laughs> okay. Two meters. Okay. Uh, two meters. A uh, forty centimeters. Centimeters. Two, two meters forty centimeters. Centimeter. There we go. You got it. Ahí está. So two meters, dos metros, cuarenta centimetros. Two. Yes. <laughs> point forty. That's pretty big. That's yes, really big. Yes, it's big. <laughs> yeah. I All love right. it. Well, that's yeah. You know, I, I don't. I don't buy them that big. You know, I want to get like a medium one. Hello, everybody. <laughs> good evening. Hello, Roger. Hello. Hello. Good evening. We're doing good. We're doing good. Happy to have you guys in class. Welcome to week number two. Week number two. Welcome to class. And today we're gonna go over. Well, let me let me start sharing already. And then if anybody comes along, se pueden pueden entrar. They're always welcome to the class anyway. Bienvenidos. Eh, segunda semana. Día número uno, y aquí vamos a comenzar, sharing. We're going to start with the sharing. And there we are. We're going to start off talking about the work environment, our website for corporate English. We start off with the module. And as you guys can see, Inglés Preavanzado Modulo Uno. How did you guys do in these three weeks? ¿Cómo les fue en estas tres, tres, en estas tres, en estos tres días que acaban de pasar? Did you guys get a lot of work done? ¿Trabajaron la plataforma? Yes. A little bit. All yes, right. I, All right. I all right, nice to hear, nice to hear. Okay, so far, by now, because we are starting week two, if you guys are still behind with the platform, 
Si todavía están un poco atrasados, no se preocupen. Acuérdense que la plataforma, eh, la sección 1, se acaba en las primeras dos semanas de, de la facilitación. Pero sí, les recomiendo que no, en el buen, como buen salvadoreño, don't procrastinate. No esperen hasta de último porque después les va a agarrar el, el, el nerviosismo y acuérdense, ¿verdad? Entonces, ojo con eso. Pero si ya terminaron la sección número uno, way to go. Well done for you guys. Well done. Eh, comenzamos la sección número dos. Um, ¿Quiénes de ustedes tuvo la oportunidad? Who had the opportunity to see the video for the personality types? Do you guys remember that? Sí. Sí. Yes? Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you guys, let me ask you, if, for example, you guys were able to, uh, if you are able to remember the jobs that were perfect for the different personality types. Como, how do you say that? Let me see. Watchmaker, yeah. I think it was one. I was looking at it right now, and some of the things that stood out for me was, for example, the realistic. You know, if you are a personality type realistic, then you could be a watchmaker. For the artistic, I saw that there was a painter on here. Who remembers for conventional enterprising investigative and social do you guys remember any of those what what would be a good job type talking about investigative probably a journalist uh which one was it the investigative a yeah, journalist investigative. yeah man yeah a reporter right journalist yeah, reporter. reporter okay i like that yeah do you guys remember anything else it could be it could be for artistic in artistic to um to his designer ah oh, the designer yeah all right i like that okay anything else for anything for conventional enterprising or social that comes to mind se recuerdan yeah. de algo See, the conventional will be banking, banking. or lawyers. Okay, uh, yeah. Inspector. Okay, let's let's leave these. These are really good. banking and lawyer. Okay, how about for social? Did you guys get anything for social? Could be teaching. Could be medicine doctors or coaching. Or journalist. Journalist. Journalist was wasn't for investigative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You know, I was thinking about with social. Se han fijado que los americanos, los gringos, cuando se van a casar, when they're gonna get married, they hire a planner, like a wedding planner. But no, the wedding. Not, not, is that, does that fit under social? No. No. Would that be under artistic? <laughs> Wedding planner? All right. Okay. 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 That's, that's all right. Where did you guys fit under these types? Were you guys able to self-assess? Se pudieron hacer un self-assessment. Identificar qué tipo de personalidad tienen ustedes. Les había dicho okay. que yo, les había dicho que this is me right here, right up there. I am a conventional. You were a conventional? Okay. All right. Okay. Conventional, artistic. I'm probably social. You were social? Yeah. All right. All right. And then so. What would be a good job for you, Fer, to match your personality? I used to work in tourism before the pandemic. That's why I'm telling oh. you that probably I'm social because I have to 
I have to treat with some people. Okay, okay. Yeah. Fair. And did you feel happy when you were working in tourism? Yeah. All right, I, okay. I'm really happy to, to be working in tourism. But now uh, I have to stop because of the pandemic, but probably in the future I will continue working at that area. And go back to it. Yeah, I completely yeah. agree. I completely agree. Um, you know, a, a banker, for example, if somebody is a conventional and he is a banker, then even though we might think of it as, oh, my God, it's so boring. Oh, my God, that totally, you know, that job sucks so much. But that person with that personality would feel like it's heaven. You know, for somebody with that type of personality, a banker, a lawyer, they would feel, you know, like it's the best thing that ever happened to them. So, okay, the idea behind the personality types is because they want to talk to you guys about understanding yourself. Uh -huh. El, por eso te dicen hacer el self-assessment, a dónde quedas tú, para entender what would be a good type for you to work. But also, ocupan esa misma personality types porque hablan acerca de los doctores, hablan acerca de un mecánico, hablan acerca de abogados, hablan acerca de muchas cosas. And then, they tie it up to another, uh, another lesson that is a little bit ahead and that we are able to use in terms of comparison. It compares un mecánico, ¿verdad? La comparación que se ocupa es un mecánico versus un doctor. Ahora, la razón por la cual se usa la comparación no es para hacer que alguien se sienta mal. No, ¿verdad? No queremos, we don't want to, we don't want to belittle somebody and we don't want to make anybody feel bad. The only reason that they, that they use it is for comparison, right? Who works uh, the longer hours? Entonces, con eso, también hablamos acerca de los gerunds. Hablamos acerca de uh, cómo se ocupan, ¿verdad? O cuáles son las, la, las maneras de ocupar el gerund. Y me recuerdo que alguien preguntó acerca de el del verse eh, de un tense y si lo ocupamos con el tense eh, por ejemplo cuando ocupamos la palabra I am working is that a gerund ahora eh, la contestación a la pregunta eh, era sí y no sí porque la regla que tú estás siguiendo es estamos tomando un verbo o bueno, estamos tomando una palabra, le estamos agregando eh, ing y en teoría esa es la descripción de un gerund. You take a verb, agregas el ing, and now you have a gerund for, for example, working, right? Or running or swimming. So, um, what is a little bit difficult to understand is that cuando vos ocupas la palabra I am, which is the verb B, then it is not recognized as a gerund. Solo se reconoce como un verb plus, ¿verdad? Las tres letras ING. Y se vuelve un poquito más confuso porque we're going to talk about other, other different ways of adding the ING y tiene otras reglas y tiene otro, otro, otra definición también, otro nombre. So, just to make sure that we're clear, a gerund. A gerund se tiene que ocupar de estas cuatro maneras para que califique como un gerund. If you are using it as a subject of a verb, que quiere decir que tú estás at the very beginning of the word, then that is recognized as a gerund. Running. Si esa es tu primer palabra y luego tú vas a comenzar con is a good way to explore, en este caso sí es. As an object of a verb, aquí está el verbo, which is likes, y si tú lo estás ocupando as, uh, as the object of that verb, entonces también de en tener. Entonces, estas son las cuatro versiones en las cuales sí califica con nombre as a gerund. Y les quería mostrar esto. Yo sé que está un poco pequeño. 
Okay, let's do the equipo. Let me try to make it a little bit bigger and see if that works for you guys. Okay. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que pasa aquí? Bueno, estamos hablando del present continuous tense. Y si tú ocupas el present continuous tense y ocupas el verb form to be, que sería I am or I'm working, el working o la palabra working no se considera un gerund por definición, sino que se considera solo el verb con el agregado del ing. Entonces, si ustedes ocupan I am, you are, he is, she is, it is, we are, they are, y luego la palabra working or running, entonces en este caso la regla solo es que tú estás agregando el ing. Pero, en, eh, si se puede decir, en, en the best of English, it is not considered a gerund because of the way that you're using it or the sentence that you're using. So remember, if you guys are using it this way, con estas palabras, to start off your sentence, I am, ¿verdad? and then right after that, está la palabra con el ing, que en este caso es working, entonces, Ahí solo es la palabra work, que es the verb, and then you're adding the ing to make the present continuous tense. So se puede decir que ese, esta porción de aquí es lo que está haciendo que se ocupe de esa manera. Present, eh, present continuous tense in conjunction with the I and the M es que va a tomar esa forma. All right, so there's other words though, right? You can say I am writing and it's still considered the same. She is listening, even though there's, you see how here, the verb is, se combina. So it becomes one big is listening and therefore it's still the same. Listen, y lo único que estás haciendo es agregando el formato ing. All right, so I wanted to get that kind of cleared away just to make sure that everybody is okay. And, y luego, pues, tenemos nuestros reviews que estamos haciendo y hemos incorporado la porción de el reading. Uh, reading comprehension. Do you guys remember what we do here? ¿Quién se recuerda lo que hacemos? ¿Cuál es la actividad? Super fácil, right? Read the article and then you ask, you ask to ask some question about the reading. Excellent. That's it. That's all it is. Okay. Do you guys remember por qué lo comenzamos a hacer? Why did we start to do reading comprehension? Why is this so important? We have to improve our fluency to read. There we go. And understand. Yes. Yes. Now, a lot of people say when you mispronounce something, some people make fun of it, but I don't. Because when you mispronounce something, that tells me that you learned English reading. Remember that when you're reading, nobody's telling you. Nadie te está diciendo how to pronounce juicy. Entonces vos no sabes que eso se pronuncia de esa manera. And so what ends up happening is that you know the word. You know what it means. But maybe the pronunciation is not there. So... Mucho respeto para las personas que, que lo hablan así. All right, so we're going to start off. Remember that in jobs nowadays, especialmente if the job is a bilingual job, the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to make you read a story. And then they're going to ask you, what did you understand? So that's another portion of what, why we're doing this, right? All right, so vamos a tomar dos minutos. E once you have read it, we're going to go to the question. Los dos minutos comienzan ya.
Ok, ¿cómo vamos? ¿Terminaron? Yes. Ok, esto es lo que voy a hacer. This time around, I'm going to read it to you guys. Y ustedes me avisan si hay alguna palabra que you did not know how to pronounce or that maybe you heard it pronounced differently y que me escucharon a mí que la pronuncié de alguna manera. All right, so here we go. One hot day, a hungry fox made his way to a nearby vineyard. He knew there were plenty of grapes. He could see them plump and juicy and could hardly wait to eat some. However, the vines were too high and he could not reach them no matter what he did. At last, tired from all his trying, he turned away in disgust. Those grapes are too green and sour for my taste. I would not even eat them if someone gave them to me. Let someone else eat them. I don't want them. Okay. ¿Alguna palabra que les llamó la atención? Nervi. Nervi. La... Nervi. The, in, the, ¿cómo era? In, the, in the beginning. In the, the, and to a nervi vine, vine, oh, what, vine quicker. This yeah. one, this one is pronounced. So if you take one word, it's vine, and vine. then the second word, yard. Pero uh -huh. porque están juntas, se no, dice. It's the, 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 first, the first word, so, nervi. Oh, nearby. 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 So bo both of those, right? The first one, nearby. And the second one, instead of saying vineyard, you have to say vineyard. Vineyard. It's a vine. Right. It, so you don't pronounce the vine. It's a, 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 a the place the, right, the, right. they produce, they produce, uh, they produce uh, wine. Right. Right, right. Yes, yes. That's exactly what it is. But instead of you saying vine yard, you know, vineyard, you don't say it like that. You pronounce it vineyard. 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 So the, the thing is that when you say vine or yard, Somebody already knows exactly what you're talking about. But since the pronunciation is more of kind of like a French background, mm -hmm. then you have to pronounce it vin, vineyard. Vineyard. Yeah, vineyard. You got it. Mm -hmm. You have to put, tal vez solo como vin diesel, ¿verdad? Vin, mm -hmm. y aquí en vez de la A, poner la E. Y esta es olvidarla por completo. So it's, so it's vineyard. Vineyard. Ok, ¿alguna otra palabra que hayan visto? So, nearby and vineyard. ¿Alguna otra palabra? Ahora, aquí a donde está hablando acerca de las vines, ahí no cambia. Ahí se queda igual. Ahí se pronuncia vines. Ahí sí está bien si tú dijiste vines. Ok, everybody good? Ok. Let's go to the question. Let's go to the question. Here they are. Okay. A hungry fox went to a vineyard. What is a vineyard? A home for birds? A place where one raises foxes? Or a place where one raises grapes? Yes, it's the last. See? See? Yes, course. Grape, right? Yeah, we got it. Okay. The grapes looked sour and large, plump and juicy, dried up. Plump and juicy. Little bit. Plump and juicy. Plump and juicy, okay. The fox did eat the grapes because, perdón, perdón. The fox did not eat the grapes because they were sour, they were too far up for him to reach, or they were no good. They were too far. For the reach. They were too far yes. up for him to reach? I think it's C. 
They were no good. They were no good? No. Oh. No, it's B. They were B? B. We, B. we have two for B. Letter B. B. Letter B. All right. Let's it's try that one. A. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> sorry. They say uh, the, the gra those gra the grapes are too green and sore to my face. Little bit. Yeah. Right. right. I, like yeah, the, the the they did. Said, I think the folks said that they were no good because he was upset because he, he was a preach the, yeah. That is correct. He was upset yeah. and then he started talking bad about the grapes. Yeah. So he was like, oh man, you know, it, it's like, es como cuando, cuando le decís a, a alguien, quiere salir conmigo, a boy or girl, and then te dicen que no, ah, pues igual, de todos modos estaba feo, te dicen, de todos modos estaba fea. Yeah. So, so the same thing, same thing happened right now, porque the fox is saying they're no good since he couldn't reach them and he was mad. Okay, okay, we'll accept. Let's go with number four. When the fox could not get any grapes, he turned away in disgust. In este caso, disgust means what? Anger, worry, or happiness? Anger. 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 Okay. We got a few more. Eight. Eight. Okay. The fox then said that the grapes were too far away, too big and juicy, too green and sour. Too green and sour. Dirty. Too green and, green and sour. Green and sour? Yeah. Uh, all right. The fox would not eat them if he didn't have any. They were sour. Someone gave him some. They were so B. B? They were so B. Someone gave him some. Letter C. Yeah, letter C. I heard three over here. Okay, let's go with majority. Three, it is. The fox despised the grapes. What does despise mean? Say they are terrible, choose them, or like very much? Say they are terrible. They are terrible? Yeah. Everybody? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right, last one. What does obtain mean? Get, disgust, or despise? Get. 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 I hear a few gets. Yeah. Woo! Your score, 100%, guys. There we go. Nice. Well done. All right. That's it for our reading exercise. Let's go back. You guys like... Pasé dibujándolo toda la noche, mírenlo. Mire qué tierno lo dice. Eh, a los compañeros les va, les va a gustar el Fox. All right. You are, you are artistic. Yeah, very, very, very. All right. So, with that, we're moving on to comparatives. Now, in the videos and in the platform, en la plataforma y en los videos, ellos mencionan comparisons they say comparisons but in reality these are called comparatives and it's a way to compare or make a comparison that's why they use comparisons in these in these videos let me see which one do they use Aquí. 2.6 comparisons with adjectives and nouns all right so in the videos, y en las plataforma, or en la plataforma, what they do is they make it a little bit more focused. For example, they're looking for nouns, they're looking for verbs, uh, they're looking for very specific things. However, when you look up uh, the definitions, the definitions for some of these uh, comparatives really uh, kind of focus on something else, and it's something more general with the spoken English language. So I'm going to talk to you guys about that portion. So comparative in general, y cuando hablas de comparative in general, usually what you're going to get is something like this. Um, let me go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. I think we overdid it. Okay. And so 
comparative will talk in the majority of the portions about participles and verbs. And so before we jump into comparative, I wanted to talk to you guys about participles and verbs so that you know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, in English, participles y verbs. ¿Qué es un participle? Well, a participle is a verb that can be used as an adjective, a verb tense, and a passive voice. Those are the three examples that we can use. Now, what does it look like? Well, there are two types of participles. There's the present participle, que it will end with ing. So whenever you guys see a word that ends with ing, that is also known as a participle. Pero teacher, y no acaba de decir que era un, un gerundio. Well, it is. It is. It's a gerund. It's a gerund. It's a, in this particular case, it's a participle. And it can also just be the verb plus the ing. You guys see, tenemos una regla y viene otra cosa y convierte esa regla in another definition. So I want you guys to keep an open mind when it comes to these different definitions. Cada una de estas cosas, bueno, cada una de estas definitions, they're there for a reason and they are there to give an explanation of why. So, remember, a participle will help you because it can be used as an adjective, a verb tense, or to create a passive voice sentence. Two types of participles, the present principle, que es ing. Any word that you add an ing to, that is a present participle. There's a past participle. Now these will usually end on ed, the d, a t, an n, or an n. And so these are some of the examples that we have. We have the base form, which is love. The S form, loves. The past form, loves. And now we incorporate the participles. Present participle, loving. Past participle, love. Same goes for take, takes, took, taken, and taken. So taking and taken. Hasta este momento, ¿cómo vamos? ¿Ya habían escuchado ustedes esto anteriormente? No. Okay. No, never. Never heard it before, but, but now you guys know, right? Okay. So this is what happens when the participles come into play. What are you trying to say? That is the question that you should ask yourself. What am I trying to say? What tense am I trying to use? Am I trying to use past tense? Am I trying to use present tense? Or am I trying to use future tense? Porque todas esas cosas tienen algo que ver en cómo tú vas a ocupar estas palabras. All right. So we're going we're gonna to put a hold on that one because we're going to continue it. But then we go into verbs. This one's a little bit easier. Verbs. What is a verb? Well, these are words that express that you're doing something. For example, when you say to swim or to write. ¿Me estamos bien hasta aquí? Okay. Yes, one, of, one of the words que ustedes, que, que se, que se, bueno, I, I would say one of the words that really caught my attention was the verb earn. When you earn something, when you earn your check, what are you doing? The word earn is a verb because you are doing something to get money, right? So one of the things that you guys will see is that 
with the modules, with the le with, with the lessons that you guys are going to be seeing, or you guys maybe you guys already saw them, they talk about the verb form, they talk about the participles that are being used, and they tell you that the participle that's being used is the past participle. And so I just wanted to show you guys that there are two forms that we can use participles, present and past and that you can use them in conjunction with verbs. For example, to think, to guess, to earn, right? So keep that in mind. And now we come into comparatives or the comparisons. Before we get into comparisons, do you guys have any questions? Everybody good? That forms, no, those forms about the participles are used in, in all verbs? Can, can we use them in the total of the verbs that exist? You, you can, but, but you just have to remember that it's not just the verb and the, for example, in the present participle, it's not just the verb and then adding the ing. You have to look at the whole sentence. What is the whole sentence trying to say? And then based on that, you can take the word and you can either add an S, add an, a D, add I, ING, or you can add the ED. So the sentence form pretty much lets you know what word you should be using. But you can pretty much do anything as long as the sentence fits. So let's say, for example, for you are trying to use the word loving, pero no queda bien en la sentence. You don't get rid of the word. What you do is you change the sentence and then you make it fit in there. Because usually when you're looking for a word or when you're trying to use a word like loving, it's really hard to get a a, uh, right, right. It's really hard to get another word that that meets that that means the same thing. So, solo ojo con eso. Si se puede hacer, Fer, solo que tenés que tener cuidado con la sentence and what is the sentence saying. So, hopefully we can hopefully we can see some of that. All right. So, remember that in this particular case, we're going to be talking about participles and verbs. And so the comparison or the comparatives, what is that? What is a comparative? Okay, once again, in the videos and in, in the lessons, they talk about very focused words. What we're doing is we're looking at the general version of what is a comparison. So in the general way of English, you use a comparative as an adjective or an adverb, and you use it to compare things. In the majority of, of ways, you use an adjective or an adverb, and you use it to compare things. For example, Mark is taller. Mark is taller. Taller is a comparative of the adjective tall, tall, taller. Mark listens more intensively these days, more intent, I'm sorry, more attentively is the comparative of the adverb attentively, right? So what we did is instead of using attentively, we used, we added more. So we put more attentively. When you hire people who are smarter than you are, you prove you are smarter than they are. Smarter is a comparative of the adjective smart. Nothing is impossible. Some things are just likely than others. Less likely is a comparative of the adverb likely. 
So these are the examples. And so how do we use them or how do we know when to use them? Well, just to give you guys an idea, comparisons come with rules as well. There are three ways, or you can say three degrees that you guys can use comparisons. There is the positive degree, there is the comparative degree, and then there's the superlative, superlative degree. And so positive, this is when you, when you tell some, well, it, it tells you about the existence of a quality. For example, nice or nicely. The comparative compares two things to show which is lesser and which is greater. You can also use, bueno, in this particular case, it would be nicer or more nicely. No sé si ustedes se, se recuerdan que alguien dice más mejor. En, en español hay personas que dicen más mejor. Y, y nosotros automáticamente decimos, oh my God, that, that's just, qué terrible eso, no, no, no se tiene que decir así. ¿Por qué? Porque en, en sí, el término correcto solo mejor, right? And then mm -hmm. there's nothing else for it. You can't add anything else to make it even better unless you change the sentence. But in English, in English, there's so many ways you can say things like more beautiful. And that makes sense, right? And then so, yo creo que también le pasa mucho a los compañeros que vienen, a los hermanos lejanos, porque in English, you, you can say things like that and it doesn't sound too bad, right? So it's more nicely. Can you imagine that? Ah, es que está, está más mejor. Oh, dice uno. Sí le entendí. But in Spanish is wrong, in English you can say it. And then we have the superlative degree. This one compares more than two things to show which has the least or greatest degree of quality. So I want you guys to think of the different ways that you can do it. For example, la palabra is he's smart. Porque saca una A más. ¿Cómo es? Una a plus. Okay. Tenemos smarter. ¿Por qué? Porque estamos comparando entre los dos. He's the smarter of the two. Por eso. Quiere decir que el compañero aquí tal vez agarró una B. B minus. This guy got an A plus. Okay. And then we have the smartest of the three. So I have three kids. My older son is the smartest of the three. ¿Verdad? El otro sacó una B minus y el otro una F. So he's the smartest of the three. Y aquí te dice positive, comparative, y superlative degree. Now, you guys can use adjectives. You guys can use nouns. You guys can use verbs. And you guys can use past participles and you get an example of those as well so if you guys are using adjectives you can use words like beautiful right is more beautiful than is less beautiful than is faster than is not as fast as you can use nouns has better english than isn't as much time as isn't as many books as has more or less friends than. Se puede ocupar como un verb. Cleans more than. Cleans less than. Cleans as much as. Doesn't clean as much. Comparisons with past participles. Is better paid than. Isn't as well educated as. So these are the examples that we use. It's solo to give you guys an idea of what some words 
or how to change some of these words. Comenzamos, por ejemplo, con big. Big, we have bigger, and we have biggest. Y en biggest, tú puedes encontrar la selecta. No, no, son bromas, son bromas. Ya no existe biggest. That disappeared. <laughs> So when, ah, yo quería la selecta. Ok, big. Todavía existe uno, teacher. En Sonsonate <laughs> dicen, ¿verdad? <laughs> no, creo que es por Aguilares. Oh, ok. That, that's not that far. All right. <laughs> so, big is the word. Second degree or comparison, bigger. Notice how we add the ER. And then, in superlative, we use biggest. Agregándole la EST. Soon, sooner, the soonest. Soon, the sooner, soonest. Ok. Otras palabritas ahí. Dry, drier, driest. Silly, sillier, silliest. Early, Earlier or earliest, pale, paler, palest, free, freer, freest, attractive, more attractive, most attractive. Now, if you guys notice, these are a variation, right? And we're using the word, the comparative, and then the superlative. Angrily, more angrily, most angrily. Can you get any more angrier? Yes, you can. ¿Te puedes enojar más? Claro que sí. Ahora, un ejemplo de cómo usarlo. So, we had present participles and we have past participles. So, you can use it as an, as an adjective. Spoken word cannot be revoked is the example. You can use it when the auxiliary verb have to form the perfect aspect. When I came, he had left. With the verb be to form the passive, this house was built in 1815. To make one of the past forms for the modal verb, I should have finished by the middle of the week. It is used to replace a subject, passive verb, construction, She entered, accompanied by her daughter. It is used for want, have, and like, plus direct object. For example, I want this text translated by noon. These are examples of past participles being used. Present is a little bit different. He is reading a book. The smiling girl is my sister. Mary is interested in reading books. I saw them crossing the street. Don't waste time playing computer games. Don't let him catch you reading his letters. He left the room laughing. And so we have a continuous form of a verb, an adjective, a gerund, which was reading, after verbs of perception, crossing, Verbs of spend and waste. Don't waste time playing computer games. With the verbs to catch and find. Don't let him catch you reading his letter. And then the two actions of the same time. He left the room laughing at the same time. He walked out and he was laughing when he did that. So, ladies and gentlemen, present particles, perdón, Present participles, past participles, some examples, right? Dryer, driest, paler, palest. Now, there is a negative way to some of these, okay? And so you got to keep an open mind for those as well, because we will see them. Okay, so let's see here. The life worksheet for this one have the past participles. 
But you know what? These are irregular. So let's see if we can get one. Past participles, present perfect. I don't want to see. Let's see which one. I had a good one and I, where is it? Ah, there it is. Okay. Complete the table with the past participles. You have a list of words. Tried, taken, one, dreamt or dreamed, been, seen, played, met, visited, had, driven, traveled, but travel's already there. So I need you guys to help me taking those words that we have and you telling me what words is the correct one. So let's do number two. Drive, drove, drove, drove driven, driven. 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 All right, let me see. Oh my God, it didn't. Well, yeah, it's driven, but hold on, it doesn't. It doesn't let me. It doesn't let me type. Or not allowed to, to type, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, oh, thank you, thank you. There we go. Let me see. There it is. Sorry about that, guys. Como es el teacher? <laughs> I mean, win, one, one. one. Oh, what happened? It doesn't change. It doesn't change. Some of these don't change. Some of them don't have a different version. So it's either win or one, and there's nothing else. Okay? Next one, dream, dreamt, or dreamed? Dreamed. 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 Okay. All right. Be, was, or were? Been. 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 Okay. Meet, met. 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 Okay. See. Saw, seen, seen, seen. seen. All right. Play, played, 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 played. Okay. Have, had, 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 had. had. All right. Visit, visited, 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 visited. Okay. Take, took. Taken. Try. Tried. 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 And tried. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and check it out. Oh, yeah, baby. All right. So for tom tomorrow, we are going to do this one because I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the uh, irregular verbs. But for today, I think it was a little bit too long. So we're going to leave this one standing for tomorrow. And let's go back over here. All right. So I just wanted to talk to you guys about the platform. In regards to the platform, I need you guys to please keep in mind that section two has been pretty much covered here. Comparisons, adjectives and nouns, comparisons, verbs and participles, which is what we had covered. And then there is a video for summer jobs that talks to you about the different jobs for summer. And then we start with section number three. And in section number three, we, we come back to models and we are gonna talk about requests using that. So hopefully for tomorrow, we are able to cover both of these. And if we can get a little bit farther than that, then good for us. 
if not, don't worry about it. Remember that these two are the ones that we're covering. So please remember, we have uh, section one already completed. Please ensure that you guys have your little check mark. Section number two should be at 2.8. And you guys can go ahead and finish it either tonight or tomorrow, which will totally be okay. And then we jump into section three. Okay. Do you guys have any questions from today? I have one question, teacher. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I saw in presentation, I think, in comparison. In comparisons? Yeah. Let me see. Here? Yeah, the rule when say when an adjective no the next one the next one yeah that one okay i saw uh, the roller number four oh yeah the rule number four say when an adjective or an adverb has more than one syllable but with exception like silly and early so there's some words that n and y but they'll have to change the early and earless for angry is more angry. Right, yes, sir. Um, more, so, so the example that they give here is angrily, right? Mm -hmm. So then you can't say angrylier. Or angrylist. Yeah, you can't say okay. angrylist. So okay. for this, you're gonna have to add the word more. So then okay. if you were using the word silly, you would say you were more silly. Okay. All right. Okay. I, I think, but a word except, no, I'm sorry. It's, it's actually the other way around because silly, there is a word for silly. So you can say silly S. Okay. okay. You can, you can. So every other word that has a Y, you would have to use the more. But for silly and early, these are exceptions. Uh, that's the only exception for silly. The, and these, are, these, are the, these are the exceptions. Yeah. Okay. okay. So for example, rest, if, and the rest you would have to add more or most or less something. or less correct yeah yeah you got it okay. like that but i had seen the thing is that i had seen a word for silly silly s and sillier i had heard yeah. and also early early s Never. yeah or earlier you can say it too for example oh. if, if i'm talking about for example happy or poorly oh there you go the same rule. well happy you can say happier and you can say happiest. Oh, so those are more words. Yeah, so there, there is, there is, I'm thinking yeah, that- Yeah, because I, 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 I thought about that because uh, when I was talking about that, you know what I'm going to You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get you guys the list of the words that come with the exception. That okay. way we can have it like, you know, we could see it like like this. And hopefully, hopefully there's not too many. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna put it here just for me to remember. All right, list of words with Y for exception. All right, so hopefully we can cover that tomorrow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Gary. Thank you guys very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. And you, then teacher. I'll see teacher, you guys welcome. tomorrow. Good see night, everybody. Bye. See you tomorrow. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. See you, see you, Good see evening. you.